Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. Um, this is going to be my December TBR and I just want to preface that if I sound sick, it is because I am sick. I have some sort of like cold or flu and it's not COVID thankfully. Um, so if I sound out of breath or nasally or anything like that, I apologize. But I really wanted to get this video filmed because I am very excited about my December TBR. Typically I do a like bookopoly board, um, I could grab it over there, I'm a little too lazy to do that. Um, but for the month of December I'm doing something a little different, and I, um, but essentially I'm going to be participating in two readathons and those readathon prompts are going to decide my December TBR because in December I kind of want to have the ability to mood read and like complete series and kind of go into 2022 with like kind of finishing off some series so I don't have to continue them into the new year. So the first readathon that I am participating in, if I look down, I have my iPad in my lap with like all of the prompts and books I'm reading. So for the first readathon that I am doing, I am participating in seasonathons, Merry Bookmas. It's the 12 tropes of Bookmas. So essentially there are 12 prompts. Each prompt correlates with a popular book trope and you pick a book for that that trope. You can double up, triple up, whatever. I will leave um, well, all three of the announcement videos because Seasonathon is hosted by uh, Melanie from Completely Melanie, Clint from Reads Reader, and um, Kaylani from Kaylani Simply Me. Oh my god, her name almost slipped my brain. Um, but I will leave those three announcement videos. I've watched all three of them and they have really good recommendations on that list. These are just books that I'm picking, so I will go through those prompts, what book I'm reading, and then I will go into the second readathon that I'm going to be participating in, which is Sprintathon. And then I will go into the couple odd end books that don't fit any of the prompts, but I'd love to read. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as quick as possible because I like kind of don't want to sit here for like a couple hours editing this video. Um, so, uh, I'm going to say like prompt number and then that for this. So prompt number one, the chosen one, read a book with the chosen one character. This one I'm not picking a specific book because I'm pretty sure multiple of the books that I already plan on reading in December fit this prompt, but I'm not sure which one like exactly fits the chosen one, you get what I'm saying? Um, so I'm just kind of leaving that open-ended because I know that something will work eventually. So prompt number two is second chance, and this can be a second chance romance, a second chance friendship, a second chance parenting, or even give an author a second chance. And I'm, I'm interpreting this as giving a book a second chance, so a book that I DNF'd and rereading it, and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And, and this essentially, I'm not sure if it's in frame, um, but this essentially, we have this circus that only happens at night, and then we have these two, two like... Um, magicians that are kind of like competing to get a spot in the circus or something like that um, if I remember correctly and it's told in like two timelines of like not two timelines but two different ti points in time where we have them as um, they're learning their magic and then later on I think I, I did DNF this at a hundred pages in um, or approximately 100 pages in, but that was ebook, and that was in March 2020, kind of right as the pandemic was starting, and also right as I was reading, um, I picked this up right after I read A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass, which is like my all-time favorite fantasy book, so I kind of think that those kind of maybe played a little bit of part as to why I didn't like this book as much and I do really hope I like it and now I have a physical copy this cost me a dollar at a local book thing um so if I don't end up liking it after trying to do a reread I will probably just like donate it to like my local secondhand store and yeah so prop number three bookception read a bookish book this can have a bookish character bookish setting or a book within a book um, and this I'm picking Fairy Fallen by Carabeth Anderson. I'll explain how it fits the bookception prompt in a minute, but first I'll explain the book. So essentially we are on this planet where there are humans and fairies kind of coexisting-ish. Um, a lot of the humans want the fae to kind of, if you get what I'm saying, like they want to kind of like eradicate the fae. And um, Sayla is kind of like a rogue, not a rogue fairy, but she kind of like um, is what's called a fallen fairy as she like kind of associates with humans and all of that. So as a kind of like a 
punishment of sorts from the king of the Sealy. Um, she has to kind of um, go to this um, the Darrow family's estate and teach their son Covian the Fey language um, and the Darrow family kind of also wants the um, Fey to be extinct and it's kind of she's like almost like a secret agent of like getting information of their plan but what Sela doesn't know originally she thinks that um, the Darrow son Covian is like a child but in reality he is a 18 year old and it's her having to teach him how to the Fey language as well as learning what the Darrow family has planned and other things being revealed that I can't say because of spoilers and this comes out on December 14th although I have an arc from like from Carol Beth Anderson and I also beta read this so I know what goes on but I know that a few little things have been changed um well because like I was told by the author that things changed and how this fits the book section prompt is essentially in the book there are these almost like headings and I could actually pull up the author's other book to kind of explain what I'm talking about but essentially it's kind of similar to this where it's like um this it, this isn't the book this is another book by the same author but essentially there's almost like little um things like at the beginning of the chapter before the chapter starts kind of like this one um where we're kind of telling the story of how humans ended up on this planet with the fae and that is almost like a story within a story because um Sela and Covian read this book and we read it as the headings like at the beginning of the chapters type thing. You get what I'm saying? So that's how I'm kind of interpreting it as a book within a book and also Covian's learning a language and he reads books in that other language type thing and like does that make any sense at all? That's what I'm kind of interpreting it as um, and I probably spent way too long explaining that and all that so let's just move on. So number four is friends to lovers slash enemies to lovers and I am picking a book that fits both and I just need to find it in the stack of books and that is Iron Widow by Zyron J. Zhao as this has friends to lovers and enemies to lovers and essentially um, Iron Widow I'm going to struggle to explain this even though I've already read this I read this in August as an arc and I'm rereading it because it might be one of my favorite books of the year I'm just like going to read it reread it to double check but essentially follow Zation who ends up um, becoming a pilot and essentially pilots in this world they pilot these things called chrysalises that fight against the alien race that is trying to like attack the city almost um, and essentially typically female pilots die because of their they're not being more like powerful enough um, and when um, Zacian's sister is killed um, Zacian ends up being pa um, paired up with um, her sister's murderer and ends up murdering him this is not spoilers at all. Um, and because of this, she ends up getting the title of Iron Widow, and she ends, get, ends up getting paired with essentially the most ruthless um, pilot named Lee Shimin. And it's those two kind of almost trying to like take down the system. Um, and then um, Zacian's childhood best friend of Yitzi, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, ends up getting involved in this whole thing and it is a like YA sci-fi sci and it is also a retelling of China's only female empress um, and I really love this because it is a YA um, poly book like essentially there's the love interest there's no, there's no having to pick between love interests essentially um, and I love this book I'm like I, I literally cannot go more than a few days without thinking of this book. I love it so much. And like, I'm so excited to read it physically so I can tab it. Um, so yeah. Number five is Small Towns. Read a book set in a small town. And at first I was like, hmm, this one is a little bit difficult. But then my brain immediately went to Unforgiven by Angelina J. Steffart, which is the third book in the Breath of Fate series, the first book being Torn. And essentially Torn, we follow Lanny Dawson, who discovers that she's a light bringer. And essentially in this world, well, it's real life, but like, paranormal but essentially there are these things called light bringers and shadow bringers light bringers take these souls of the dead to heaven and shadow bringers take the souls of the dead to hell and when lanny discovers that she has this ability she has to learn how to use it but before she's she learns how to use it she has to kind of fight not fight but like 
um, try not to have her soul be taken by this demon named Cass, who essentially is trying to take her soul because if a Lightbringer does not, a Lightbringer can res have their soul be at risk of being taken by a Shadowbringer or a demon um, to hell if they do not complete their first, like taking their soul, first soul to heaven quick enough, kind of. Um, and these third, this is the third book, like Unravel is the third book, and I'm really excited to see where this series continues as I love the first two books and I honestly really just enjoy Angelina as an author. Um, I'm like currently reading one of her other books as I'm filming this. Um, but I'm really excited to read this and see where the story continues because there was things that were revealed in book two that honestly had me going, I'm sorry, ha huh? Um, if that makes any sense at all, like you know that feeling where you're just like, I'm sorry, huh? Um, and I really, I'm really excited to read this. Number six, game slash competition. Read a book with a game, a competition, contest, sport, or tournament of any kind. I'm going to be reading The Night Circus because there's kind of like a competition to find out who's going to be the, like, magician type thing. I'm not really sure. Um, for these next two, they fit the same book. So retelling, read any kind of retelling. And fake dating, read a book with fake dating or read a book that you've said you've read. Yada yada yada, fake dating. Um, and that is essentially Iron Widow as it is a retelling, and then also there is an aspect of fake dating. I'm not gonna say where and what, but there is essentially, it's, it's not fake dating, I shall say. It's more of like a fake marriage, is a little bit more of an easier way to explain it. Um, so yeah. Uh, number nine, Close Quarters. Read a book set in Close Quarters. I'm picking Fairy Fallen by Carol Beth Anderson again for this because essentially because of how Sayla has to tutor Kovian, they're constantly in like the study studying and she also moves in with the family to teach Kovian how to speak the Fae language. So that's kind of what I'm interpreting as Close Quarters. Also again, Iron Widow kind of fits this as well, I just realized. Um, so both of those books count, I guess. Uh, prop number 10 is Found Family, and this I'm picking Salvation by Karen Licks. And essentially, this is the third and final book in the Sanctuary Trilogy, with the first book being Sanctuary. So essentially, we follow Kenzie, who is a junior guard on the prison Sanctuary, and essentially Sanctuary is a prison for teens with abilities in space. So essentially, if you are arrested, you will get sent to the um, prison of Sanctuary and it is again in space and Kenzie is a junior guard because her parents work on the space station as well and when something that is not supposed to be on the space station arrives on the space station um, this ends up involving Kenzie getting kidnapped by the prisoners and all of them having to figure out how way to get off the spaceship be like the space station before the thing that is on the spaceship like the space station gets to them, if that makes any sense. Um, and the final book is Salvation, where we have our characters are kind of stranded on this mysterious planet. And why I count, count it as found family is like, the both the prisoners and Kenzie kind of, they bond over this traumatic thing that happens. And I say it does have some similar elements of found family, so that's why I'm kind of counting it. Um, for 11, royalty. Read a book with any kind of royalty. I'm picking Fate and Flames by Miranda Lynn, which is the third and final book, I think, in the Fae Rising trilogy. The first book being Blood and Promise. Is that the thing? Yes. Um, where essentially we have two, we follow two main characters in the first book. We have Ara, who, upon the death of her parents, she is sent off on this kind of mission to figure things out. I can't remember exactly what she has to do, but it leads her on this, like, adventure type thing. And then we follow Tamir, who's a half fae, and half fae are usually treated like garbage, but um, because of his healing abilities, he ends up being like in the good graces of the king type thing and ends up working for the king. And when Tamir ends up making this kind of truth serum that works on the sea fae, um, he needs to kind of keep that under wraps and convince the girl that he's in love with and his mentor to run away. And then the second book, we have added in a another point of view, which is a which is a king. And then I'm assuming that his point of view is going to be in the third in the third book. And also there is, if I'm not mistaken, in the second book, Ara ends up befriending a prince. And there there's royalty throughout and all that, so I'm counting it as royalty and all that. And the final book is a book with an animal companion, and I'm going to be reading the group book for um like 
the Mary book is because every season of Thon there's a group book and that group book is um, The Accidental Apprentice by Amanda Foody, the first book in the Wild Lore series and essentially this, all I know is it follows um, Barclay who ends up you're not supposed to leave leave into the woods, and he does this, and ends up getting bonded with this beast, and then he has to go and kind of travel to to seek help from the mysterious lore keepers, people who willingly bond with beasts and share their powers. Um, but after a brawling and dangerous apprenticeship exam and discovering that his own beast might not be so bad after all, Barclay must make a difficult choice, return return to the home he's always known, or embrace the adventure awaiting him. And this is a middle grade. I absolutely love Amanda Foodie. Like, I read the, um, the Shadow Game series, which is actually right behind me, um, and that is, like, one of my favorite series of all time, and I'm so excited to pick up another book by her, as this is her, like, middle grade, like, her first middle grade book, and also the second book, The Weeping Tides? Is that the... Yes. The Weeping Tides comes out in, I think it's February? Um, February or March, and so I'll be able to read this and then continue with that when that book comes out. This book I am borrowing from my library, so this, I do not own the physical copy, but I'm borrowing it from my library. So those are the 12 prompts of Bookmas, so those are what I'm reading for that. Um, now moving on to Sprintathon. So Sprintathon is hosted by Pris Sprints, um, her YouTube channel, I'll leave a link down below. She really only does sprints, no YouTube videos, but essentially Sprintathon it takes place from December 13th through 19th, and there are six prompts, although not all of them are book prompts necessarily, so I'll go through them, and essentially you can double up, triple up, as long as you do the, the prompts in order. Prompt one. Uh, preparation, make a reading snack. I'll just make any sort of snack that I involve reading. Like, a lot of the times I'll eat popcorn while reading, because that's something that, like, reading, did, like, on my iPad, not physical books. I don't read and read physical books, but, like, yeah, so I'm, I'll just make some sort of snack. Ready, set, go. Read a book you're excited about. I'm kind of picking two books, because I'm, they're, the they're, they're it's, it's two books in the same series. I could barely speak there. Um, but essentially, it's Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Curse by Carrie Maniscalco. And essentially, all I know about this is we have Amelia, and when her twin sister is murdered, um, Amelia ends up trying to do this ritual to bring her back to life, maybe? And then ends up instead summoning the Prince of Hell of, like, and then ends up some summoning Wrath, who is a prince of hell. I think that's it. And I know that um, Amelia and her sister... Is it Victoria? Is that her sister's name? It is! Oh, I literally just randomly guessed that. Um, they're witches, and it takes place in, like, kind of almost like an... It I think, like, a Italy-type thing, or silicon-type parental like a silicon restaurant I don't know um and there's like murders and I don't know I literally don't know much about that um about this book all I know is book one is why and book all I know is book one is why and book two is new adult and like you know I love me some new some new adult fantasy um and yeah I'm just really excited to read these as I've heard such good things and so it's such an anticipated release so yeah and then just keep sprinting participate in one of the reading sprints i will price is going to be hosting sprints the entire week i believe so i will probably jump in on one of those at some point that week um exhaustion hits read a book that intimidates you i'm also i'm i'm, I'm intimidated by these mainly because the fact i'm scared that i'm not gonna like them so i'm intimidated in that fact but also like they kind of like big books. They're not that big books. I guess the first book is like 350, and then the second one's like 400? 420? That's roughly. But in total, it's like 700 and some pages between the two books. And also, I'm just scared that I'm not going to like them, so that's how it intimidates me, I guess. So close. Read a book that's under 300 pages. I'm going to be reading Believe Me by Tara Moffey, and this is the 6.5 novella for the Shatter Me series, and essentially, um, 
I'm not going to say much, but essentially it's almost, to my knowledge, like a wedding special of the Shadow Me series where we have two of the main characters getting married. And that's literally all I'm going to say. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm going to read for that. It's 220 some pages, I think. Um, so, under 300 pages. And then you did it. Reward yourself. I don't know, I'll probably like, reward myself with like, I don't know, watching a movie or... Who knows? Um, reward yourself is a vague thing. I don't know. Um, so those are what that was. And then there are four other books that I want to read in the month. So I'll first start off with the physical book that I have that I want to read, and that is The Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody. Essentially, all I know about this is it takes over the place of, I think it's like a 24-hour time span in the Denver airport where um, two characters' phone get, phones get mixed up and it's just like I don't really know and I feel like this would be a perfect Christmas book like maybe like an end of year read because I feel like it would go by really quickly but also it takes place on New Year's Eve and this is one that if I don't end up getting read I will probably ha hold off until next December to read it that's kind of why I want to read it um, but if I don't end up reading this, it's fine. Or if I don't end up reading any of these other books I mentioned, that's also fine. Um, another book I'd love to read is Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. I kind of want to finish off Mistborn Era 1, which essentially, I'm going to briefly just describe the first book, which is The Final Empire. Essentially, we have, we're in a world where there are Alamancers, who are people who have the ability to ingest metals and use their abilities. Each metal has a different ability. And then we also have Mistborns, who are people that can ingest all the, um, like, metals and use all of the abil abilities. And we have Vin, who is a Mistborn, and she ends up getting taken under the wing of a another Mistborn named Keltsir. And Keltsir kind of teaches Vin how to use her abilities while also kind of hatching a plan to take down the Dark Ruler, who is kind of like an evil ruler that has kind of... Um, taken over kind of control of like the whole world type thing and is like very evil and all of that and The Hero of Ages is the third and final book in Mistborn Era 1. There are going to be three eras. I think Era 2 is currently being written or just finished. I'm not sure. Um, don't quote me on that, but I kind of want to finish Era 1, and also I've heard that Hero of Ages is like the best conclusion to a fantasy trilogy that that a bunch of people have read so I'm kind of curious of how good it can be because I gave book one five stars and I gave book two four stars so is it gonna go five four five or who knows um I also want to read Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Ihimida I even with the pronunciation god, I'm like, is that how it's pronounced? I'm sorry if that's not how it's pronounced. I feel like a horrible person when I can't pronounce people's names. Um, but essentially, all I know is this is a YA thriller where we follow two students at a boarding, boarding school, and that's literally all I know. I've heard amazing things about this, and this is the Avengers Initiative Reading Challenge group book for um, December, and essentially... Um, the Avengers Initiative reading, reading Challenge, I'll leave the original announcement video in the description, but it is a reading challenge based on, like, Marvel and, like, the Marvel movies. Originally, it was just supposed to be for 2021, but it's, like, been extended into 2022, and essentially, you read books, you fill prompts, and you recruit Avengers, and all of that kind of thing. Um, and so, yeah, that's the group book. And then the final book that I want to read in December is Heart Song by TJ Klune, which is the third book in the Green Creek series. And all I'm going to say is this is essentially like werewolves and witches, and that's kind of literally all I'm going to describe. It's like we follow like people of the Bennett pack, and they're a pack of werewolves, their family, and that's pretty much all I'm going to describe. Um... I'm slowly working my way through the series of reading one book a month. I'm kind of buddy reading with a few people, although for book two, we kind of all read it on our own pace, and just as we were finishing the books, we were just like, I finished the book and gave it blank stars, and so far I've given the first two books five stars, so I'm really hoping this will be a five star read as well. Um, I can't think of any other books that I have to, that I want to read this this coming month. 
I know that's a lot of books, but I'm at the moment not working. Um, that could change in December. Um, so I will have a bunch of time to read also with like um, the winter break for my school. I don't have to do as much schoolwork in December, so I'll have like the last like week and a half-ish of December to just binge read stuff and all that. Um, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what books you're reading in December, what books off this list you've read, you're interested in, or anything like that. I love to hear bookish stuff in the comments. Um, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's long, so I'm going to end it here. Bye!